And everybody said, Amen. Wonderful to be with you again. Now I know all this area because, you know, I've been coming here. Wonderful people. Are you there? Yeah. And are you ready for the word of God tonight? Yeah. The Lord bless you, bless me, and bless all of us together in Jesus' name. Yeah. Let's close our eyes for prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your people. We thank you for our leaders, our pastors, and our overseers, and everyone giving their best for you. We pray, Lord, that our service will be rewarded by you, even here on earth and eternally in Jesus' name. I pray that the joy of service will come to everyone. And I pray, Lord, that as we are taking care of things belonging to the kingdom of God, you take care of everything belonging to your people in Jesus' name. Once again, Lord, we want to remind you and remind ourselves there will be no lack in our lives. No limitation in our lives. No loss in our families in Jesus' name. You will bless everyone. I will pray, Lord, the joy of the Lord will be our strength. In Jesus' name we pray. We're coming to Philippians chapter 1. And we're looking at some verses here in Philippians chapter 1. I read from verse 12. Philippians chapter 1. We're looking at verse 12. It says, but I would ye should understand, brethren, that the things that happened unto me are falling out rather unto the furtherance of the gospel, so that my bonds in Christ are manifest in all the palace and in all other places. Here Paul the Apostle talking to the Philippians, writing to the Philippians said, I want you to know that the things that happened to me as falling to the foreground of the gospel, the spread of the gospel, the establishment of the gospel, and the impact of the gospel. Why was he saying that? Because uh, if you remember how the gospel was preached at Philippi, there was, uh, you know, this uh, lady that was uh, following after them, and that was uh, saying, these are the servants of God who shown to us the way of salvation. And it was by an evil spirit, a spirit of divination. And eventually, as uh, she did that a number of days, uh, Paul felt grieved in the heart and then commanded that evil spirit come out of her. And the evil spirit came out. And then the people, the masters of that uh, mage, they felt unhappy and they felt angry because they lost that power of the divination to uh, say whatever the so saying that the lady was having and they lost their gain and because they lost their gain then they con conspired together and they put him in the prison and you would think that putting him in the prison like that will destroy the gospel the gospel will not work again will not move again because some people might say if he is a man of god if he is a real servant of god how is it that this has happened unto him but paul did not think like that an apostle he didn't think like that he said the things that happened to me they have been for the establishment and the spread and the foreground of the gospel and you remember when they were in the prison at midnight they prayed and called upon the name of the lord and they sang and the prison doors opened and then the philippian jailer himself became converted and the whole of the family became converted that's that's a government official and it was saying you see all the things that happened to me persecution oppression or maybe deprivation everything is for the foreground of the gospel it says we're preaching by word of mouth we're preaching by our lifestyle we're preaching by the things we're suffering and everything that happens to us all things work together for good for them who are the called of god who are called according to his purpose he said don't be sorry for me and don't be unhappy and don't misunderstand or misinterpret the suffering the persecution that comes upon us who are preachers every sin will work for the purpose of our calling and many people still come to the lord but look at this 
We're looking at verse 14 now. It says, And many of the brethren in the Lord waxing confident by my bonds. Many of the brethren, that is the believers, members of the church, those who saw that, they became confident, they became courageous. They said, if that could happen to Paul the Apostle, if Paul the Apostle could go through that, and I am going through this small sin, and I thought that was a problem, they became confident in the Lord, and he said, they are much more bold to speak the word without fear. You were seeing that that kind of imprisonment and that kind of oppression and that kind of difficulty and that kind of challenge and that kind of uh, evil thing, whatever it is that came upon them like that, you will see uh, it will slow down the gospel. It will totally paralyze all the members of the church. And nobody will want to do anything now because if that could happen to an apostle, how about me? How can I suffer that? How can I sustain that? He said, you know what it has done? It has given boldness and courage. It has given stamina and strength and backbone to the people that saw that. And so they are now much more bold to speak the word of the Lord. Now it comes to the other side. Look at verse 15. Some indeed preach Christ even of envy and strive and some also of goodwill he said now many people just started preaching but some people they preached the gospel other people they preached evil enmity false doctrine misinterpretation of the real gospel because instead of preaching christ and preaching the gospel they were preaching paul I said, look at him. He said that circumcision is not necessary and he's suffering for it. He said that Jesus is the only Savior and he's suffering for it. He said, forget Moses and forget all those rituals and he's suffering for that. And Paul, the apostle, said they were just preaching because of contention and because of envy. All they want is to come into conflict and fight him. That's why they are preaching. And now he goes on to say in verse 16, the one preach Christ of contention. Not sincerely, supposing to add affliction to my bonds. He said, the affliction of the bonds, they are enough already. He said, the pressure I'm facing with the unbelievers, they are enough already. But look at these people and look at what they are saying. And look at the implication of what they are saying. And look at the conclusion they are making. They centered everything on Paul the Apostle. And he said, it's all for contention. But then he says in verse 17, he said, but the other of love, that is other people that were preaching as a result, I mean, bold and they became courageous because of what happened to Paul the Apostle. He said, but the order of love, knowing that I am set for the defense of the gospel. And then you ask Paul the apostle, say, how do you feel about all this? How do you feel about this kind of confusion? How do you feel about this kind of contention? He says, look at verse 18. He says, here, yeah, what then? What conclusion do you make out of this? And what uh, solution do you have for this? It says, what then? Notwithstanding, in every way, whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is preached, and I thereby do rejoice, yea, and will rejoice. He said, those who are doing the wrong thing, I leave them with God. I'm rejoicing because out of me, the people who are negative, at least they're preaching. The people who are positive, they're preaching. The people who attack me, they're preaching. And the people that have affection for me, they're preaching. And it says, because Christ is being spoken about everywhere now. They're mentioning Christ over there, mentioning Christ over there, mentioning Christ over there. Some of them are positive, some of them are negative, some of them are oppressive, and some of them are uplifting. But I rejoice because Christ is being preached. Well, it's good that Paul the Apostle rejoiced. That gave him, you know, the freedom and the liberty so that he'll not be bogged down and say, oh, what, oh, what's happening to me? Look at what these people are doing. They're adding affliction to my bonds and then it'll become sorrowful. His attitude gave him 
the joy of service his attitude gave him uh, uh, the gratitude he had to the lord every time that whatever people did whatever people said it was still the joyful but uh, let's think about this now i'm talking to you tonight on examining uh, the motives of our service examining the motives of our service you can see in the passage that the people that said they were serving the Lord, they were preaching the gospel. They were laboring for the Lord. And truly, they were laboring. But what was their motive? Because on the final day, a motive will be examined. And then a motive will determine whether we're going to have rewards from the Lord or we're going to have the recompense of evil doers. Examining the motives of our service. There are three things we're going to consider. Number one, the consolation of profitable sacrificial service the consolation of profitable sacrificial service number two the consecration to positive sincere service there were people that consecrated themselves and they gave themselves and gave their talent to do what is necessary and to do what is appropriate and to do what is practical and positive that will bring conversion in the lives of other people the consecration to positive sincere service number three the condemnation of perverted selfish service the condemnation of perverted selfish service let's come to number one number one is the consolation of profitable sacrificial service let's come to philippians chapter 1 again verse 12 it says but i would uh, ye understand brethren that the things which happened to me unto me at the falling out rather unto the fortress of the gospel it says that's what's important the gospel the gospel of god the gospel of grace and the gospel of peace and the gospel of salvation he said that's what's important and the things that happen to me as i examine everything if it uh, made uh, for the loss of souls i'll be unhappy if the things that uh, happen to me made people to backslide i'll be unhappy if the things that happen to me made people to give up their uh, their conviction i'll be very sorrowful but as i look at it i've been to that prison and now because of going to that prison people are saved over there i was chained to that uh, person a uh, priest uh, they paid the warden in the prison and uh, i kept on witnessing to him and before i left the prison that fellow gave his life to the lord i went to that other place too even though it appeared it was a negative situation somebody got healed and somebody got delivered and somebody got saved he said you know what now i understand that all things work together for good if you are called by the purpose of god don't be sorrowful and say why is this happening to me if that is bringing the gospel out and if that is making the gospel to spread and to be established in the lives of people he said look at this in verse 13 so that so that my bonds in christ are manifest in all the palaces think about that all the palaces he said all those palaces they call me to question and then i answer them and they try to imprison me and i answer them and they lock me up and they put me everywhere everywhere conceivable they can put a criminal they put me but everywhere there in the dark i left light there before i came out i planted the seed of the gospel before i came out and he said that's my joy that's my joy the consolation that souls are getting saved the consolation that the work of god is being done the consolation that believers have been edified the consolation that weak believers have been strengthened and emboldened as a result of what has happened to me think about your life you'll not be so sorrowful when you see that the things that happen to you 
give you a chance to give testimony and give you a chance to plant the seed of the word in another person's life and he give the people to a chance to see that this is a real believer if you were not there if you did not face that situation and that conflict maybe they will not hear the gospel but as a result of you being there you have got you have spreading the gospel and there will be a reward for you in heaven in jesus name and look at acts of the apostles chapter 20 now you understand paul the apostle and you know why he said what he said or why he wrote what he wrote he's telling us here acts of the apostles chapter 20 verse 24 it says but none of these things move me what's he talking about i was in the philippian jail but none of these things move me why doesn't that disturb you because you know we sang and we just discovered if we were not in that philippian jail we will not know that singing alone can open the prison doors we did we will not know that singing alone can make all the prison and foundations to be shaken we will not know that just singing without you know fasting and praying and fasting and praying we will not think that we will not know that singing could be mighty and powerful that all the bands of those people they were loose and then even the philippian jail jailer we didn't have to preach at all as he opened his eyes and then he wanted to kill himself he said don't kill yourself we're all here he said sirs what must i do to be saved and it was so very simple believe on the lord jesus christ and thou shalt be saved and thy house you know what happened he took us out of that prison that night he took us to his house and then we spoke to everybody that night you know what happened they were all baptized and so i look at my prismate i says none of these things move me if you will count your blessings you will see that the lord is on your side and you'll see that he'll never forsake you you'll see that if he allows anything in your life at all it is for the furtherance of the gospel are you happy or are you sorrowful see what i'm going through you're you have a great reward in heaven in jesus name look at that verse 24 but none of these things move me neither count i my life as dear unto myself why so that i might finish my course with joy if you read the epistle to the philippians you'll find it's an epistle of joy in fact it says i joy and rejoice with you and he said you are my joy and then is a source of very joy that's why he says he says all the things that happen to me i count them as nothing because i want to finish my cause of joy and the ministry which i have received of the lord to testify of the gospel of the grace of god he said that's my life that's my purpose that's my pursuit that's all i'm living for and if what i've gone through is uh, making me to spread the gospel further of course i keep on rejoicing look at verse 26 there in verse 26 it says wherefore i take you to record that this day that i am pure from the blood of all men for i have not shown to declare unto you all the counsel of god the suffering did not make him to minimize the message or to diminish the message or to subtract anything from the message it says you know i have learned now that whatever i'm going through god has allowed that and since god has allowed that i'm pleased with that god could have stopped that he didn't stop that if he sent me to any prison sent me to any any captivity sent me anywhere he has a purpose and the purpose is to spread the gospel and to preach the gospel and anywhere you go you discover that purpose in your life in jesus name and let's look at galatians chapter one it says uh, this there is this what he was living for and because this is what he was living for he said i rejoice therefore imprisonment they mean nothing a persecution that means nothing opposition of people that means nothing and harassment of the enemy that means nothing it made his running at us and saying these are the men of god who preach unto us the word of salvation and i cast out that devil and the people become angry that means nothing because i know everything will turn to the forefront of the gospel always think like that in your life everything in your life will turn for the spread of the gospel Everything in your family will turn to the furtherance of the gospel. Because that's who you are. You're a child of God. You're, you're a servant of 
God and God has selected you people may look at it as negative they look at it from any direction but we know that you are there and the hand of the Lord is with you in Jesus name Galatians chapter 1 I'm reading from verse 10 it says for do I now persuade men or God for if I if I seek to please men uh, uh, then uh, for if I yet please men it says I should not be the servant of Christ it means I don't know I'm under the control of Christ that he is my master he is my Lord he is the director of my life and he is planning every step and every day and every week and every month and every year and so whatever happens I agree I accept because I know I'm going there and I'm going not going to think oh they are sent me to that other place that means the work of god is going to be destroyed no not at all not at all not at all it is for the fortress of the gospel he knew that he had been given a trust and that trust was going to give first thessalonians chapter one first Thess chapter two rather first Thessalonians chapter two reading here from verse four it says but as we were allowed of god to be put in trust with the gospel even so we speak and then it says not as pleasing men but god which tried our hearts maybe you don't understand why it's emphasizing the fact not as pleasing men but god you see if anybody went to prison like paul the apostle and stayed in many prisons lord just like paul the apostle you have the tendency of changing the message you have the tendency of modifying the gospel because you'll think if i say it this way they might see i'm a friendly person i'm a nice person i'm not here to condemn anybody they might see that all the accusation people are having against me they might see that there's nothing there and i might come out of the prison quicker than uh, you know just staying there and still hammering the same truth and not compromising and not changing anything but he said i'm in the prison and i know god is here with me i'm in the prison i know christ is here with me i'm in the prison i know this is what i was born for i'm in the prison but i know that all the days i spent over here in the prison it will be for the fortress of the gospel so i'm not going to modify that gospel i'm not going to change that gospel i'm going to stand by every detail every jot and tittle of that message you see that uh, many people they go to a particular situation they say this is a difficult place this is a challenging place if i'm going to survive here i must uh, know how to preach if i'm going to survive in this place i must know how to tone down if i'm going to survive here i must not to modify everything and modulate everything and change everything so that they will not think i am too critical of their society but not paul the apostle he said i know what god has called me to and i know that i'm going to keep the gospel exactly as the gospel is and when i do that whatever reactions come is going to be for the spread of the gospel look at verse 7 and you see sacrificial service we're talking about uh, this as profitable sacrificial service look at verse 7 it says but we were gentle among you even as a nurse cherishes a children so being affectionately desirous of you being affectionately desirous of you we were willing to have imparted unto you not the gospel of god only but also our own souls because you were dear unto us you see that he said all who are concerned about it he said, you know all these converts get them saved and get them settled and steadfast in the things and in the ways of the lord in fact if you come back to first Thessalonians chapter one first Thessalonians chapter one i'm reading here from verse five for our gospel came out unto you not in words only but also in power and in the holy ghost and in much assurance as she know what manner of men we were among you for your sakes it says uh, when the gospel came to them it came with real power 
and real authority and many of them came to know the Lord and ye became followers of us and of the Lord having received the word tell me what follows them having received the word how in much affliction what if you go to a particular place and then as you are preaching all the idol worshippers they came to say hey hell look at this Paul look at this man he has come and is turning the minds of all the people in Asia Minor is turning them away from the Lord is saying that idol is nothing and then even our trade is going to now you know experience a real a crash because he's saying that many people should turn away from our idol this and Diana is the God of the Ephesians Diana is the God of the Ephesians and they were saying that for about two hours everybody shouting and then throwing doors and throwing everything everything real affliction and real conflict and real contention then your mind might sink and say hey we've wasted our time here nothing is going to happen here. something is going to happen yeah. i said something is going to happen because it says these thessalonians they receive the gospel in much affliction and then he goes on to say look at verse 8 for from you sounded out the word of the lord not only in macedonia or an Achaia, but also in every place you see that even though there was affliction there was contention when he was preaching and when he got to that situation all the same in every place now your faith to god word is spread abroad so that we need not to speak anything and then he goes on to say verse 9 for they themselves show of us what manner of entering in we add unto you how ye turned to god from idols to serve the living and true God. Verse 10, and to wait for his son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, even Jesus, which delivered us from the wrath to come. The, the apostle Paul had a positive ministry. Number one, of saving the lost. Saving the lost. Don't allow your suffering to be cloud you. And don't allow the imprisonment and the persecution or whatever to hinder you from knowing the focus why we are ministering and why God has called you and what God has raised you up for. Number one, saving the lost. Number two, separation from the lost. The lost of the world, the lost of the eyes and the loss of the flesh and the pride of life. Paul the apostle knew that they must be separated from their lost. They must be separated from all the evil things that surround them and bind them and hold them down. And sometimes, you know, the imprisonment and the suffering and the persecution may make you forget the purpose, purposeful preaching profitable preaching the thing that we need that even though persecution is there affliction is there contention is there we still know number one save the lost number two separate them from their lost number three to sanctify the liberated sanctify the liberated that these people who are coming to know the lord you see when people come to know the lord you know they are now saved they are born again and but they have many problems and challenges my family is against me this one is against me and that one against and because of that we might just be solving problems solving problems you know this one has a family problem that one has a commercial problem that one has market problem that one has this and has that and because of that we will forget that the goal is not just to solve those problems and Paul the apostle Paul the apostle knew that he knew that therefore he was going to establish those believers the people came to know the Lord they were saved and the people were separated from all the works of darkness and the paths of darkness and everything and then sanctifying the light breaking. Number four is to shine in light. To shine in light. If you go to say for a second chapter the second chapter of Philippians Philippians chapter 2 in Philippians chapter 2, here I'm reading from verse 16 or verse 15. Philippians chapter 2 and we're reading from verse 15. It says 
that ye may be blameless and harmless. He didn't forget Philippians. Philippians. You see, even though in, in Philippi there was suffering, in Philippi there was affliction, in Philippi there was imprisonment, in Philippi they laid lashes on them and they put their feet in stalls. Yet we will not forget the purpose of our calling. We will not forget the profit that we need to make with the gospel and that the real gospel the powerful gospel that changes lives and turns them around that gospel must still be preached it says that she may be blameless and harmless the sons of god without rebuke in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation among whom you shine as lights in the world among whom you shine as lights in the world don't forget the great commission don't push the great commission aside i'm going through this i'm going through that i'm going through that other thing and show the people that their light must shine let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works you know it is not the time to teach them about you know those people they are throwing stones at you you must conquer them you have many enemies who must pray and have night vigil god uh, convince all these enemies crush them and cancel their power Power, let them shine as light let them let them demonstrate righteousness let them demonstrate the life of christ and then your ministry will be profitable and positive number one save the lost number two separate them from the lost of the world number three sanctify the liberated number four shine in life number five serve the lord serve the lord that he said don't forget yourself because of the suffering because of the opposition now we cannot serve the lord we're fighting somebody we're contending with somebody we want to do something that those people will know that you know they have touched the anointed of the lord and then everything now comes to yourself 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 self-defense leave all that alone and understand by the grace of god everything that happens to you will be for the furtherance of the gospel the spread of the gospel the establishment of the gospel and this work will prosper in our hands in jesus name colossians chapter one here is the goal we must never forget colossians chapter one verse 28 when it says uh, whom we preach warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in christ jesus so that's still our goal the impact of the gospel in the lives of the people that's what we want to see happen it will happen in jesus name in ephesians chapter 4 ephesians chapter 4 reading from verse 11 and he gives some apostles remember all those apostles were persecuted and he gives some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints that's the profitable ministry as the profitable sacrificial service for the perfecting of the saints for the work of the ministry and for the edifying of the body of christ till we all come in the unity of the faith unto uh, the knowledge of the son of god unto a perfect man unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of christ as you look at that verse 13 you see that's a profitable service that's a positive service and that is the purposeful service that is what god has called us for don't allow suffering to make you deviate don't allow suffering to divert your attention away from the purpose of the gospel that you'll still be able to say it doesn't matter because the things that have happened to me they are now for the furtherance of the gospel so that in all palaces in every place now the name of christ is proclaimed let's come to point number two the consecration to positive sincere service the consecration yeah, the consecration uh, to positive sincere service if we're going to render any service to the lord let it be positive let it be sincere let it be something that comes out of a heart that has been converted a heart that is cleansed a heart that is conformed to the very nature of christ we should never do anything out of a wrong motive 
Paul the apostle is suffering okay and so what pastor so and so is uh, suffering and so what sister so and so is suffering and so what are we going to you know take them and then use them and then talk about them and preach about them in our either it is sunday or monday or it is a thursday or it is in a night vigil or it is in a prayer meeting that so on see what it will see what's happening to her and see what's happening to him how does that preach the gospel we should leave all them all of them alone if so and so is suffering i don't know why if so and so is having persecution i don't know why so and so is having oppression i don't know why and if any bad thing happens to anybody it is not ours to come to the pulpit and say hey we are the men of god and we are the people of god have you heard what happened to so and so so and so was opposing us and so and so was against us now can you see can you see what's happening when we say we are the men of god and we are the people of god now you understand because anybody that touches the anointing of the lord well that's what happens to them and if you're still there in the congregation you don't recognize our authority and our calling anything that happens to you that's your good luck is that preaching christ and then somebody then the conclusion would know would say why is the minister talking like this why is the pastor talking like this yes i'm going through this i don't understand myself why i'm going through that should i become the topic of the message there were people that said well we don't understand Paul is an apostle. We don't understand. That's a great man of God. We don't understand. We know he was converted on the road to Damascus. And all this imprisonment is there. We know that Peter is not even suffering as much as this. When you put all the apostles together and you look at their imprisonment and you count them one by one for all the apostles, they're still not up to the imprisonment of Paul the apostle. But we don't know why. It's a mystery. Therefore, we leave that alone. We will preach the gospel leave other people alone if they are suffering don't add to their affliction if they are being oppressed don't add to their oppression and just pray for them pray for them if you think maybe they've done something wrong take that to the lord in prayer never say anything in the public or in the private that will run another person and when the person hears that Pastor so and so said this about me. Uh, sister so and so, our irrespected leader in our church said this about me. They are downcast. They say, I thought they loved me. I thought they'll preach something that will lift up my faith. Why are they saying that? Well, we'll not be among the company that will discourage other people. Some people can become so discouraged and they will say, okay, if that's what they think about me, when two people are talking together, she's looking at them, they're talking about me. And then two people are over there, they're talking about me. Why should I come to this church? Already I am in problem and everybody knows and I'm the topic of their preaching. My brother does not right. My sister does not right. Let us lift up the falling. Let us encourage those who are discouraged. And don't let us use anybody, anytime in our preaching to discourage them. Let's look at this. The, consoli the, the consecration to positive, sincere service. Let's come to Philippians chapter 1. Philippians chapter 1, I'm reading from verse 14. It says, and many of the brethren in the Lord. Here Paul the apostle, he was jubilant. And he said, many of the brethren in the Lord waxing confident by my bonds are much more bold to speak the word without fear. He said, now my ministry has been multiplied. I thought I was the only preacher. And then I went to the prison as a single person. And when I came out, I saw that 10 people, they have picked up courage and confidence and boldness because of what I'm suffering. He said, it's like my life is planted. And because now my life is planted, my life is bringing forth fruit. Your life will bring forth fruit. You see, the suffering, instead of burying you and hiding you, and then you become useless now, you're going to become more useful. Every drop of tear will be rewarded. 
every switch that you have because of that suffering will be awarded in Jesus name unbeliever says something negative about you like you are the Paul of today and uh, your relatives say something negative about you they pack you aside when they mention your name in the family forget about you forget about it's got madness with religion he doesn't think like everybody else anymore just incarcerate him imprison him forget about him as if he's dead is he part of our family no he's no more part of our family and then you hear that that your relatives are saying that they have imprisoned you don't worry you come out of there 10 other people are going to follow you and then other people are going to become confident and bold because of the things that happen to you the lord will use your suffering in a positive way he'll use the persecution in a positive way and look at verse 15 second part of verse 15 it says in philippians chapter 1 it says also of good will some of good will look at verse 17 it says but the order of love these people are preaching and because of the suffering of paul knowing that i am set for the defense of the gospel eh, that's the way it has always happened don't you remember let's come back to acts of the apostles chapter 8 acts of the apostles chapter 8 and i'm reading from verse 1 acts of the apostles chapter 8 verse 1 it says and saul was consenting unto unto his death saul was consenting unto his death whose death is that tell me out loud that's Stephen. You will think because Stephen stood for the right, stood for the gospel, and stood for the name of Christ. Now, they stoned Stephen, but uh, God did not deliver him. God did not say he will not die because that man himself, he has seen the glory of God in heaven. He said he looked up to heaven and he saw Jesus Christ standing at the right hand side of God. He didn't want to stay here anymore. He said, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. I see what the people cannot see don't count days against them they don't understand they are making me to spend more time in eternity than i would have spent and therefore lord receive my spirit and then he died after he died look at this in verse in verse one it says and at that time uh, there was a great persecution against the church which was at jerusalem and they were all scattered abroad throughout the regions of judea and samaria except the apostles except the 12 apostles and now all the people were scattered you know the result of that the result of the death of Stephen and the result of the scattering abroad. Look at verse 4. Therefore, they that were scattered abroad went everywhere. What were they doing? Preaching the word. That persecution was for the furtherance of the gospel. It happened to them like that in the early church. It's going to happen to you like that. Every problem you've got will become positive everything that happened to you that appeared why should this happen the lord is going to use it to bring many into the kingdom in jesus name and then look at verse 5 in verse 5 it tells us and uh, then philip went down to the city of samaria and he picked christ unto them he was a deacon it was a distributor of food in Jerusalem. Were it not for the persecution? It was a persecution that made him to go out to Samaria. And then many people became saved. Look at verse 6. And the people with one accord give heed unto those things which Philip spake. He hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. Why it not for the things that happened over there? We'll never know that the power of walking miracles had been deposited in the life of Philip the things that happened to him they were for the furtherance of the gospel for the salvation of samaria and it says in verse 7 for clean spirits crying with loud voice came out of many that were possessed with them and many taken with pulses uh, it says that were lame they were healed and there was great joy in that city great joy in that city when you start from verse one there's great sorrow great lamentation and depression 
and despair they scattered the church they persecuted the church ah, but don't don't be sorry for us the things that happened to us are for the fortress of the gospel i want to show you once again god will not allow anything in your life why it not for the fortress of the gospel and you're going to be rewarded for that in jesus name and uh, so the gospel went on being preached and then we we'll look at uh, verse 14 look at verse 14 now what the apostles which one at jerusalem heard that samaria had received the word of god they sent unto them peter and john and then it goes on to say who when they were come they were come down preach for them that they might receive the holy ghost look up here for a moment if philip went to samaria if he had been preaching negative about peter and john those apostles in jerusalem we thought they knew how to pray we thought they could have prevented persecution we thought that they were to build a great church in jerusalem but you know they are prayerless that's the reason why that uh, they couldn't stop that kind of persecution now i'm ejected out of my family i've lost my business i've lost everything and many other people too they have been scattered here and there because of those incompetent incapable apostles who are in jerusalem if he had been talking like that like those who preach against their leaders if anything any bad thing is happening to their leader they, they take that up instead of talking positive and preaching the gospel they'll send down peter they sent down john and they'll say you see you see what is happening to us now because of uh, those prayerless people who call themselves leaders philip did not do that he just preached christ unto them he didn't talk about any negative thing uh, that the apostles were not able to do and when the work expanded and peter was necessary and john was necessary to come when they came the people received their ministry and the people they benefited from their ministry because no no negative thing had been spoken about any of them and they laid hands on the people and they received the holy ghost you see that's an example for us that whatever is happening to somebody ahead of you how do you know that may not happen to you if you know somebody is going ahead of you it's your group pastor somebody is going ahead of you it's your region overseer Some, somebody is going ahead of you it's your state overseer and something happened in his family and something happened to him and then you heard about it you don't know the genesis of that you don't know the reason for that or any of our workers any of our leaders may not be an overseer but just our leader just our a worker sectional leader whatever and then i hear this one has happened and then because you had that on saturday on sunday now you don't have any other message the only thing you have is <laughs> everybody let's be careful and let's understand uh, god has a way of catching up with people i could tell you and i can i can, I can mention it you don't need to mention it. you will hear it yourself that you know they say we're leaders we're leaders we're pastors we're overseer we're powerful look at what has happened now that's not the gospel that's not the gospel that's what happened in philippi when paul the apostle said some are preaching a message of contention and messages of running other people down but he said i praise the lord because there are other people they come up they forget about me they are preaching christ and they preach with courage and they preach with boldness and many people are coming to know the lord i'll be i pray you'll be a positive preacher somebody that will preach the gospel not to run anybody down but to lift jesus up and the lord will bless this work in your hand in jesus name there are many other passages that will reach you but let me just tell you uh, let us come back to this uh, philippians chapter one and uh, there is a word i need to point out there we mustn't forget philippians chapter one I'm reading here from a verse uh, from verse 14 and many of the brethren in the lord waxing confident by my bonds are much more tell me the word there bold to speak the word without fear bold 
bold and brave number one you are bold in commitment bold in commitment if paul the apostle could go through that i will go through my own little persecution if paul the apostle could sustain that and still be preaching and still be singing and still be praying and still be writing and still be authoritative i am going to do whatever i can do you will do it in jesus name number one bold in commitment number two bold for conversion bold for conversion you see the philippian jealousy says what must i do to be saved it is say well um well talk to the lord the lord will show you because we spoke to the other person and cast out that devils from him and we got into trouble and this one is an official this one is a government official if we do this now we don't know what will happen uh -uh. paul the apostle said we're bold for the conversion of the people that's what the lord sent us out for and that's what the lord has sent you out for declare the word of god whoever is there whoever is not there they must be converted because except a man be born again he cannot see the kingdom of god and through you they'll see the kingdom of god bold with courage bold with courage that's what paul the apostle said he said many of the people many of the brethren when they heard what happened to us and then when they saw what happened to us they became bold with courage they had stamina and they had strength and they had backbone i pray that your backbone will be strong in jesus name you, you will not cringe and you will not compromise because of whatever might have happened ah be careful that happened to paul the apostle if you tread that same way that may happen to you if this has happened to the green tree what do you think will happen to the dry one if this one has happened to somebody that has the gift and the calling of an apostle and then you are now coming on and say i'm also going to preach <laughs> be very careful can you sustain that don't worry about that they were bold ways courage we have courageous people in the house today i said we have courageous people here today and the lord will keep you courageous in jesus name bold through christ bold through christ because it was because christ was in them the life i now live i live by the faith of the son of god who loved me and gave himself for me you are bold with christ through christ and then you are bold as conquerors bold as conquerors nay in all these things we are tell me more than conquerors through christ to love us it says they were bold as conquerors and then they were bold in conflict bold in conflict anybody can act bold when everything is calm peaceful everybody loves you everybody supports you everybody is congratulating you everybody is praying for you everybody is praying with you everybody is saying some good good things about you anybody can be bold in that situation it's like you know a, a mother in the midst of her children and grandchildren and mama will be bold because she's among her children anybody can be bold when all your friends are there and then you stand up and then you say something authoritatively and somebody preaches me and says look at that man that man is bold i said no all the people here are his friends i want to see what happens to him when the enemies are there i want to see what happens to him when the opposers are there when the conflict is there when the challenges are there and then you can stand up and present the gospel forcefully and faithfully without compromise i say that is boldness and the lord will give that to you in jesus name bold in commitment bold for conversion bold with courage bold through christ bold as conquerors bold in conflict bold without compromise bold without compromise I pray that every form of compromise the lord will cleanse away from you in jesus name let's come to point number three now the condemnation of perverted selfish service the condemnation of perverted
selfish service let's look at this paper philippians chapter 1 i'm reading from verse 15 philippians chapter 1 verse 15 some indeed preach christ even of envy and strife some indeed preach christ even of envy and strife it's like they're not fully converted the spirit of strife is still in them they derive joy in seeing apostles suffer they derive joy in seeing the servants of god afflicted it's like they're looking for bad news and once they hear the bad news it's happened to brother so and so it's happened to sister so and so uh-huh they've got what they're looking for and because of this kind of satanic joy you know satan laughs when something bad happens to good people and because of this nature of satan stealing them but they, they pretend and they cover it up and they use it in preaching they're preaching and yet it's a negative kind of preaching in their preaching and yet is to make other people feel the pinch and the spike of the suffering they're going through look at this in verse 16 it says the one preach christ of contention it's almost like they're in a boxing arena it's almost like they're wrestling it's not almost like they want to see that Paul and point the finger at his face and even crush his nose with their pointed finger. We told you, you've not said anything yet. You've just gone through a little. More will be coming unto you. Can you think of people that talk of the anointed of the Lord like that? It says, the one preach Christ of contention, not sincerely, supposing to urge affliction to my bonds they want to add affliction to my bonds they might uh, speak uh, you know something that is truthful and then you are carried away with that look at romans chapter one romans chapter one reading from verse 18 romans chapter one verse 18 for the wrath of god is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men look at this who hold the truth how who hold the truth how tell me out loud in unrighteousness they know the truth they know the gospel they know about christ they know about calvary they know about repentance and they know about conversion but they hold that good doctrine they hold it in unrighteousness in unrighteousness there's bitterness in their heart and something has happened to the apostle and they're going to take hold of that and say ah uh -huh, don't you see and they will preach the gospel they'll quote the scriptures they would uh, have the uh, you know all these uh, references and everything everything will look all right the only thing is that they're preaching out of a bitter heart out of a heart that is accusing paul the apostle and he's saying that he is suffering because of what he did before. And look at Galatians chapter 4. Galatians chapter 4. And we're reading from verse 17. Galatians chapter 4. We're reading from verse 17. Galatians 4. Verse 17. They zealously affect you. The zealous. They're powerful in speaking. And it looked convincing in speaking, but the motive is wrong. It says, they zealously affect you, but not well. Yea, they would exclude you, that ye might affect them. What's he saying there? They will exclude you, that ye should be saying, Paul is my father in the Lord. Paul is that apostle. He is the one preaching the truth. I thank God for Paul the Apostle. I'm one of the people that follow him. In fact, even before he said, follow me as I follow Christ, already in my heart, I was saying, I'm going to follow Paul. I'm going to follow Paul. And these people come and they preach their contention and they preach their evil sin to exclude these people that said they accepted Paul as 
their father in the Lord. It says the preaching zealously and they're doing that so that they will exclude that she might affect them, that she might love them, that she might, they might sway you to their own side. I pray God will give you wisdom. It's not just speaking the truth, it is the motive behind the speaking of the truth. And let's look at an illustration in Job. I'm looking at Job. Job chapter 4. Job, we're looking at chapter 4. Please open your Bible. Job chapter 4. I'm reading from verse 1. Then a life has the terminate and sudden said, If we are said to commune with thee, talking to Job, will thou be great? But who can withhold himself from speaking? Eliphaz said, this man Eliphaz said, Job, we see you are suffering. We see the problem you are going through. Can we talk to you? Can we reason with you? Can we examine the suffering you have and put the place where, put a finger on the nail and see there's the reason for your suffering? Then it goes on and on. Chapter 4, by the end of chapter 4, he has not finished. In chapter 5, it is now continuous. Look at chapter 5, verse 1. Call now. If there be any that will answer the Job, you call. Pray. Talk to the Lord. You say you are righteous. You say you are right. Call now. If there be any that will answer you, to which of the saints wilt thou turn? It says, uh, Job, can you show us an example in history before this our time of a saint that suffered like you are suffering? Because now Job doesn't, I'm a saint. I love the Lord. I am pure. There's no evil in my heart. Okay. Point to anybody in history that suffered like you are suffering. And look at what he said. Speaking the truth, but misapplying the truth. Look at verse 8. In verse 8. I would, I would seek unto God. That's good. And unto God would I commit my cause. That's great, Eliphaz. Which doeth great things and unsearchable, marvelous things without number. Eliphaz, that's true. And then verse 10, who giveth rain upon the earth and sendeth waters upon the fields. You are correct, Eliphaz. And then you look at uh, verse 12. It says, He disappointed the devices of the crafty, so that their hands cannot perform their enterprise. That's true. That's true. It's talking about God. But you know, it's applying it to Job. He's saying, Job, I'll convince you. I will convict you. I will condemn you. You are the only one that thinks you are right. You are the only one that thinks you are in favor with God. We know that you are wrong. And because God has found you to be crafty, He has found you to be deceptive, He has found you to be an evil man. That's why this is happening to you. Hold on, be careful. Don't come to a conclusion. That's what they did to Paul the Apostle. You're going through this imprisonment. You're going through this. You're going through that because you're a bad man. Don't cover up. Look at verse 13. It taketh the wise in their own craftiness. And the counsel of the forward is carried headlong. They meet with darkness in the daylight, in the daytime. And this man can really talk. This man can really preach. And this man is talking to us now about wicked people. He's talking to us about people who are not sincerely serving the Lord. The only thing is that he's bringing Job into that situation. You know, if Job accepted that, he won't be able to pray. If Job accepted that, he'll not come out of that problem. If Job accepted that, he'll not hold on to the promise of God. When somebody who appears to know the truth... When somebody who appears to know the scriptures comes out and he talks about you, and you know he's talking about you, and he lays it on you and he says, We know you are wrong. We know you are wrong. God answers prayer. How is it that your prayer is not answered? 
We know God answers prayer. We prayed for you. You prayed for yourself. You said you fasted. Everybody fasted for you. And you're still in the problem. Tell me. Don't, don't tell me you're a real believer. And these are people that know the Bible. These are people that you think they almost can touch God like this. And, and they're telling you that you have gone. They're telling you if you die in this condition, if you allow people to determine whether you get to heaven or not, they'll send you to hell when you should have gone to heaven. Be very careful. There are people that will take that word, they have something in their hearts. Before you got into that trouble, they were watching you. They didn't like you. They, they, they think you say you've done something negative against them. And they know the Bible to put all these verses together. And when they throw it at you, it will take the grace of God for you to escape. But thank God you'll escape. I said, thank God you'll escape. Yeah. Uh, these are people that came to Paul, uh, that saw what happened to Paul, and they started preaching and preaching and preaching. And my, my, it was real preaching. And Paul, the apostle, there's nothing to that. There's nothing to that. They're preaching out of contention. They're preaching out of strife. There's selfishness in them. There is an ulterior motive in them. That's why they're saying what they're saying. Look at this man in verse 14. It says, the meat of darkness and daytime and they grow up in the morning in, in noon day as as uh, in the night and then it goes on uh, look at verse 27 verse 27 it says now this is the conclusion it's talking to job it's saying lo this we have searched it so it is hear it and know thou it for thy good job are telling you know this one for thy good no what you have said will destroy anybody what you have said will discourage anybody what you have said will make a person have depression we, we don't want to know that look at chapter 6 verse 1 tell me chapter 6 verse 1 i want to hear you and job answered and said oh that my grief was thoroughly waged and my calamity laid in the balances together what does people say what's his name again i said what's his name the person that um Elifas come to chapter 42 chapter 42 of job i'm reading from verse 7 job chapter 42 verse 7 and it was so that after the lord had spoken these words unto job the lord said to who eliphaz the temanite my wrath is kindled against thee eliphaz speaking boldly authoritatively preaching with contention and strife and condemning the man of god job the lord said my wrath is against thee and against thy two friends for ye have not spoken of me the things the thing that is right as my servant job has you see that they were condemning the righteous they were condemning the perfect and the pure and you'll think that's preaching and he said lo we'll search this one out know this for your good and god said no you didn't speak right look at verse 8 therefore take unto you even now take unto you now seven bullocks and seven rams and go to my servant job and offer up for yourselves a bunch offering and my servant job shall pray for you for him will i accept lest i deal with you according to your folly in that ye have not spoken of me the sin which is right as my servant job and tell me the name so a life as the Temanite and builder, uh, the Shulhite and Zova, the Nehemanite went and did according as the Lord had commanded, and the Lord also accepted Job, and the Lord turned the captivity of Job. 
It will not be long. The Lord will turn your captivity. All those seeds they are commenting about, all those seeds they are talking about, and they are preaching contention and preaching conflict and they are preaching condemnation, the Lord will take everything away from you. And the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. Also, the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. It's coming. Blessings are coming upon you. And all those uh, guilt they try to heap on you, the Lord will take everything away in Jesus' name. Remember where we started examining the motive of our service. Examine the motive of your service. Let's look at this before we pray. Second Corinthians chapter 13. Second Corinthians chapter 13. We're reading from verse 5. Examine yourselves examine yourselves your ministry your preaching your service is it of contention examine yourselves is it for confusion you're confusing job you're confusing paul you're confusing the ministers of god before you got to them they thought praise the lord i know my conscience is all right i know i'm serving the lord i don't understand this that's happening to me but i know my redeemer liveth when you come and present your own message of contention you bring confusion examine yourself is it a ministry of contradiction contradiction paul has said this and now you are ready to say another thing that will contradict is it a ministry of condemnation you are there to condemn Paul. And they may say that they are apostles. They may say that they are high. They may say that they know God. But we know. They may even say they have gone to the third heaven. Don't mind them. We know what we know. That bad things do not happen to righteous people. If this man were righteous, why is he going through this? Mind what you say. That's a ministry of contradiction and condemnation. A ministry of compromise. You are compromising with the evil doers, with the persecutors. You are going to the side of the persecutors, and now you are accusing Paul the apostle. And sometimes it's a ministry of commercialization. Commercialization is like you know, you know that you are going to get something out of this. You know that Paul has uh, detractors and enemies, and if you say what you are saying, they too they will support you. Examine yourselves examine your service examine your sacrifice if i give my body to be burnt if i give all my goods to feed the poor and have not charity it says and become as nothing examine your sacrifice examine your sincerity when you come to preach when you come to present the word we are all there we're listening to you are you attacking somebody there are you attacking somebody over there? What's your motive? Examine your sincerity. Examine your supplication. You know, we are prayer warriors, and uh, these are great, great, great people of prayer. And then the world, somebody comes there. We've had stories about that person before he came, and we were waiting for him to come here one day. And then he comes to the prayer warriors, and uh, then let us pray. We'll close our eyes, we're praying. And then, hey, sister, tell me, how about this? How about this? Is that revelation, or is it a story you had heard about her? before she came and now we're praying we have the gifts of the spirit and then we're dishing it out you know it's for knowledge we already had before she came examine that kind of prayer examine your supplication you know we might serve in vain and we might just you know we're preaching we're serving we're doing everything and everything has ulterior motive examine your sharing i come out i want to give testimony and the testimony you know there's somebody there and that fellow has you know been married for 25 years and there's no child and now i come and i look and i say she's there you know i praise the lord god answers prayer hold on hold on what's in your mind why are you saying what you are saying? Are you trying to pinch somebody? The wise as serpents and harmless as those. No sting on your tongue. And there is uh, no sarcasm in your testimony. 
and there is no poison coming out of your mouth you're not going to poison the mind of somebody are you are you giving that testimony to edify and to lift up or it is to direct something to somebody there we must examine our sharing why am i sharing that why am i saying that examine your shepherdship we shepherd we pastor we lead and then as we shepherd do we have cliques i have my favorites i have the neutral ones i have the ones that if you come and you tell me you are suffering then they will ask you are you in the church two sundays ago okay you are there what did you hear didn't i tell you that suffering and sin they go together now you want me to pray for you this one you are going through tell me tell me have you examined yourself why are you saying that my brother are you rejoicing because they are suffering are you pointing to them that are you sure that this person is a backslider and that's why they are suffering we must examine our shepherding everything we do that's why it says examine yourself so that on the final day we don't come there expecting that i labored i sacrificed i did everything and then we get there here comes the great preacher here comes the great servant of god and they look at your record and all the motives were wrong today we can make correction because another day might be too late examine yourselves let's rise up and talk to the lord in prayer we're really going to pray we're going to talk to the lord want the lord to help us examine yourselves whether you're preaching preaching with conviction you're preaching for contention